So we're now moving on to planning. So Malcolm, we'll, we'll give you a call in about an hour. talking about this particular site for three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is interesting the comments perhaps are now coming out, but um, there's been plenty of opportunities all along to consider this. To clarify the issue of the demand for affordable housing we have done or carried out, there has been carried out two surveys in the last four years. And that has identified a need for at least 15, and that number no doubt will go up again if we carried out another survey. And the purpose of affordable houses is purely for people in the village that have family that can't afford for their family to move to the village to be with them, so they can go out. And as part of the process, there will be a plan for occupancy. And the key, one of the key issues will be, are you a resident of Brent Knoll? Are you a family in Brent Knoll? So we're not encouraging it for people from, I'm, I'm using extreme examples now, Newcastle on time, for example. We have to recognise that as a village, um, property prices are quite high and youngsters can't always afford to have their own homes. And that's why we as a council have supported the policy of affordable housing in the village. I'm not going to go into the history of why we, we chose Station Road as a site, but that was back three years ago as a potential site. Uh, we have been debating this in conjunction with Sedgemoor um, affordable housing team. After probably a delay of six months when it was hoped the original planning application would go in, we are now faced with the plans that will be being considered by Sedgemoor. And so I would like to give the opportunity to fellow councillors <coughs> to, to make comment as they see fit, please. And if we can go around the table, perhaps in a, in a logical way, if anybody wants to say anything, um, please do. John, just to kick off, please. Well, I think there needs to be absolute clarity on Friday on Brent Street. Um, there is this argument about uh, sight lines. Um, it's entirely up to uh, highways as to whether an entrance onto the main street is suitable or not, but uh, there has been flooding there, there's been a lot of discussion about drainage in the whole area, I actually take the point that there is a collapsing uh, culvert uh, on, on or under the road. Uh, we have to be quite clear that somebody says that the situation on flooding is clear solvable and solved. What point of all, anyway. But flooding on Red Street, I think, is an issue which we'd have to have absolute clarity on. Thank you. Um, me, Mr Chairman, thank you. Um, I've had a, a close look at this uh, planning application this afternoon, and I've uh, uh, looked carefully at the 11 uh, interested party applications that have been made um, and I've listened to um, um, the um, comments that have been made and all of the applicants online or the interested parties um, all are concerned not necessarily with the development itself they're not complaining about the development some people are complaining about its overdevelopment, but it need, we need to be um, aware, um, fellow councillors, that this development has to step up financially in um, 
building these affordable homes. So this is why we have the development we have. Um, people, one person has said, well, um, there is a loss of a view, but that is not a legitimate planning uh, um, objection, as you know. And we have to, again, look at this in pure planning matters and no, uh, no uh, other means. But notwithstanding that, we have to uh, take into consideration um, the comments that have been made. And I think if we ignore some of those comments that we've been made, um, the Parish Council will look Charlie's yeah. if they don't thoroughly uh, pursue some of these objections, which I think are really uh, worth uh, noting. First of all is the flooding on the site. Um, I have seen no drainage report from the dra Axbrew drainage, whether they are happy with the uh, um, so, um, situation that has been presented to them. I noticed that there is a 10 metre curtilage all the way around the site so that they can gain access to uh, drain the reams and I noticed that there is a swale. But that still doesn't, I think, uh, clarify um, the position for us. We don't want a site that is going to be built here that is going to probably cause flooding elsewhere. So I think we should be very mindful that we need that more explanation on that. Um, um, the other uh, important point is flooding um, of the road, uh, Brent Street, that can, we cannot put a development up there allow that development and then have that very problem still going on. We'd look ridiculous. So I take on board what um, uh, uh, the comments that have been made in all these 11 interested party applications. I see that Wessex Water have said you need to give us a bit more information and make a proper application to us uh, for this particular site. Again, there's no other comment on how the foul water is going to be dealt with. We know we've had tremendous upgrade in our, our foul water systems in Brentnell. I'm sure it can cope with it, but I think we need satisfaction. Um, there are comments in here about wildlife. The wildlife um, um, study that was made in 2018 is quite comprehensive and it gives the um, contractor um, exactly his um, requirements. The only requirement that he's got to uh, think about carefully are the, um, are the uh, residents um, uh, um, by the name of Voles, who they cannot um, do, deal with the license for this until they get planning application anyway. So that can't be done, but it's been highlighted and how it can be overcome for wildlife in that area. Uh, the other thing that concerns me is the entrance to the site. Um, coming from Station Road, I feel that you've got good visibility, but coming up from Brent Street, from the middle of Brent Knoll, where this first property here sits on the bend, does make that entrance slightly blind. And I think we need to have either a wider entrance or uh, um, some signs there mm -hmm. or, or something to make people aware uh, that there is this uh, narrowing of the road, for want of a better phrase. I think the other thing that needs to be mindful of is that you do get people, even now, parking here. There's one car left there during the week, most of the time, right opposite the bus stop. So if a bus or anything, say the, um, the slinky bus comes down, stops at that bus stop, the road's blocked straight away. I know we haven't got any uh, present amenities, and we know the reason why we cannot have them. First bus will not do it. Um, so the entrance needs sorting out. Tra preventing parking on that area definitely need sorting out in terms of white lines, etc. 
People have, have complained about the lack of amenities and schools. Well, we are encouraging young people in the village to go to our school. <coughs> Lots of children at the moment at Brentnell First School come outside this village. So I think we're encouraging young families to come into the village by um, offering this social housing and this housing development. As regards travelling to amenities, we all have to travel to our amenities anyway. This is the nature of living in Brent Knoll. It's, it's done by us who live here and it will be done by the people that live there. There is no way around it. We're not going to build a Tesco down the road so that they can go and do their shopping. So, in summary, my point is um, I accept the points that have been made. I would move to support the development but I'll only support it on, once again, I used it in the last planning, the condition precedence must be met of proper investigation into the site drainage, proper investigation into the damage culverts, and proper investigation into the entrance to the site. Um, people who are listening may not be aware that the problem with Brent Knoll is, as you all know, we are on a flat area and the rise and fall between Brent Knoll and the coast is literally about a metre. So you're never going to get water flowing away quickly. It is a problem of Brent Knoll. But I think with the work that we've done with the drainage board, uh, in, in at the bottom of Church Lane, with the drainage board now being more proactive in keeping our reeds free, that is helping us um, achieve um, a, a safer environment. But, uh, fellow councillors, I would support the, the, this application only if, and it is a condition precedent, and I'd like that monitored if we agree the proposal, Flooding, damage culverts, traffic and entrance and exit to the site. And, sorry, one final point I made a note of, which Mr Brown made uh, a very valid comment, is someone needs to take responsibility for this area in terms of drainage. Because you can't do this sort of thing and leave it unattended. We need to know who's going to take responsibility for making sure that it's free of encumbrances. Thank you, Colin. Peter? Well, I think Colin said it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the thing I noticed from the floor earlier on, the people were talking about 15 affordable housing and all this. Uh, so happens this development has 15 houses, but they're not all affordable. So people should realise that. Is it four tenths? Yeah. But it doesn't satisfy the need of the village for all the people that want to find affordable housing. We can but support the scheme because we climbed into bed with Sedgemore some three or four years ago and they had their say, we had our say, we had six sites come up and although this wasn't the preferred site, it came down through because of the unavailability of the land, we ended up here. We've done everything that is possible to satisfy the needs of the village, the needs of those that live short by, the needs everybody concerned. Like Colin said, the access that's changed from Station Road to Brent Street um, is, is not the greatest thing, but I think it could be approved, uh, improved by the removal of all the trees, the, the little cops that are on either side of the access at the moment because it is really a mess. You'd have a brand new development there with a making scruffy old entrance. Uh, also, it would improve the uh, vision up the road and down the road for people going in and out of that site. Uh, as for the drainage, I thoroughly agree with Colin and, and uh, John that uh, before we do anything, we should be satisfied that that is not, that the, the site is not going to suffer unduly when we get the wet weather. Uh, but I, I've, I've got something to say further on, not on this, on the general flooding or 
taking away the water at the village anyway, because it's not only in this area that I'm worried about, it's, it's everywhere. But having said that, that's what I would say. Thank you. Uh, yes, well, I, I agree with what um, Colin has said, and obviously Peter as well. Um, my concern was the access, and which has been explained fully by Colin, and, and uh, the flooding, um, because quite a lot of the letters that were written in um, mentioned that, and obviously there is a concern, and it does need to be addressed before we can go forward. And, um, and obviously it has to be a, a precondition of, um, of whatever the uh, actual um, decision is. But, um, I, but I am behind the development because there is affordable housing being offered and, uh, and it is a need. Um, there are many and varied um, opinions of people who perhaps don't understand the reason why, but I hope that we've explained it sufficiently tonight. And um, that um, there has to be something for people who cannot afford to come and live here and have obviously the right criteria to apply for the uh, houses and I think um, I'm fully behind that so you know so I hope that um, on the discussion we can come to a decision thank you David anything to add? I'm not going to say a lot because I think Colin and Peter and everyone sort of covered the point so I'd be exactly with them the drainage is the major issue obviously I haven't done a lot of drainage myself that area is an issue, it can be solved, but we need to know that it will be, as Colin stated, and the access, and as long as highways are happy, which I think is the main thing, and obviously they're going to have their say and look at it, then I'm in agreement and support the development, because we've been talking about it for so long, we're sort of meeting our criteria as such, because we do need to provide some houses. Mm. That's quite enough. Okay. Brian, anything to add? Or? Well, what can I say? <laughs> um, there are still one or two invulnerables, I think. In principle, we support the idea of this development, but there are still problems over the flooding, the broken culvert, and uh, a couple of years ago, that area flooded twice in about two weeks, I remember. So, in its present state, I can't support it until those things have been sorted yeah. out. Yeah. I think other members are saying, I mean, they've all the points <coughs> have been covered. Um, all I was going to add in some respects is, is as Brian said, I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to support it as it stands at the moment without those things being agreed. Right. Particularly, we have We've seen in the letters that have been sent in, it's, it's not just the flooding of the houses that are being built here. We need to ensure that these aren't going to cause flooding for their neighbours as well. My understanding is that the drainage board have said that there is a way of dealing with it and, in effect, re-engineering the flow of water so it goes towards a Brent Broad instead of heading out through the broken culvert. But until we've seen that actually guaranteed, I think we can't... Um, be fully supportive. I'm disappointed, I must admit, with the access onto to Brent Street in terms of the flooding because that has been flagged up through the process. The parish council has raised this on a number of occasions and the fact that it isn't addressed at all in the application I think is disappointing. Um, the other thing I am disappointed about in, in some respects is an element of design. The layout is, is, is not bad but when you look at some of the designs I don't think it actually is as good as some developments we've seen elsewhere. Um, particularly, in my own view, plots, I think it's eight and nine, as you're coming through the entrance, yeah. there is a particularly unusual uh, roof design line. and roof line. And if that's the statement you make when you go into the new development, I think that's, that's unfortunate. Um, and five through to seven is a very large white render building, which again is, is not typical of, 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 of the village. Um, so I would, I would be hoping that we would be seeing an improvement in that design um, should it come forward. Other things they have tried to deal with, we have got a footpath in there which is to help at least get people away if you're coming from the far end of Station Road, away from the, the horrible junction we've got to cross over at the moment. They are showing the widened footpath along Brain Street which at the moment is incredibly narrow and not good. So there, there are things that they've done 
there is going to be an impact on the bungalow, I think it's 193 Brent Street, but again they've rejigged the layout from the first plan to minimise the impact of, of what was going to be a turning head here and the headlights going into, into rooms and such. So they've made some things and, and improved some, I just don't think they've done all that they need to and I think we, we need to make sure that, uh, that those elements of, of the drainage um, and the highways, as we've said before and, and about other applications, highways will deal with the technical bits here but we need to make sure they've addressed that because it is narrow um, and we all know it. it is. It was moved from Station Road because the highway's advice, as I understand it, was that the Brent Street access was better than the Station Road, but they need to get it right because it's, it's something that we're all going to have to do, live with if it happens. So I very much support the views that have been expressed by others that we need to ensure those things are, are part of it before we support it. Well, thank you for that. Um, I have to say those are most my thoughts entirely. Um, I think just for the benefit of people who are in the audience, we are not expert planners, we're not expert highway engineers, we're not expert drainage engineers. Our comments really are based upon our experience of what has happened and what we have seen as much as anything else. So we're now <coughs> going to have the situation of coming up for some form of proposal. So the question is, do we support the planning application with a codicil? or do we object to the planning application on the grounds of the issues that we've all raised? And I'm mindful to do that, possibly. I, I, I think, Mr Chairman, the way the conversation's gone is that we are effectively uh, rejecting this planning application. One, on its architecture and design, in terms of plots 8 and 9 and the white one we don't like, uh, and uh, secondly, we're rejecting to it on the uh, poor um, detailing regarding how um, water, rainwater runoff is going to be dealt with. Uh, secondly, um, you can, we cannot walk away, uh, or the developer cannot walk away from the culvert problem in Brent Street. That must be uh, rectified. And finally, um, the other thing we're objecting to is the um, entrance into the site uh, and its safety, particularly approaching from the, is it, will it, will it be the east or from the centre of the village yeah. of Brentnell. And for those reasons, yeah. Can I, I would say that. Seek Sorry. clarification, possibly from Peter, who probably more expert. The culvert that we think is <coughs> an issue. Is that actually on the entrance line? Mm -hmm. On the entrance what? Or the proposed entrance of that? It's on the train. It's on the train. Yeah. What, what happens is we've got the town gutter all the way down on my side, like, because it's open ditch every now and again. Yeah. It comes down as far as the old manor, and the old manor, it comes across the road in between the development and the, the last bungalow that comes up through here. Right. And all the drains in Brent Street from Hill Lane down to Brent Corner get fed into the town gutter. I'm just going to bring this up later but I'll talk to you now. I've noticed that if you go through all the, the places where the open ditches are, the road is sliding into the ditch with the heavy lorries having a pull over. And if you go to Orchard Hill that was, that now the flats, you've got a big area there that you try well, to improve the visibility for those coming in and out and the road has been built over the culvert right. over the town gas and you can see where lorries have been pulling in it's actually dipping and I don't know how many times outside the red car we've had that filled in although it is shuttered there but the, the, the ditches aren't shuttered at all and the, the what, when we diverted the water from the bottom of the hill lane across the road into alongside Body's Bill, they seemed to think that was it. Yeah. But all the water from the properties down from the hill lane down to the old manor still come off the well, all the water in the road comes down the town gut. Mm -hmm. But that is one of the worst parts of all because nobody ever goes into that and trains that little bit there. 
or they don't, and they don't rob the... Mm. Talking about culverts, is there, <coughs> right on the corner here, is there not a culvert disappearing? That goes on again. Yeah. Up the road, there, yeah. exactly. Are we talking about that culvert? Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's problem. Not, is that, that not If, if I remember rightly, earlier in the year when we had some flooding up that part of the road, it, up here. it was it was on that corner. Oh, it's here. It's on that corner. It's on that, it's on that corner it's going here. into the property it's that's once it developed. There's two different issues. Yeah. There's two different issues. Yeah. Yeah. It's two different issues. Yeah. It's probably two issues. Yeah. Yeah. But that is like blocked from here on, but that's not connected to that. This comes out here and goes across. Yeah, if I could yeah. chairman, just yeah. to clarify that the, the two things are, as David said, there's two completely separate issues. There is a, a collapsing culvert, which I'm being told is is, is down this end, yeah. which was originally taking the water under out under the road yeah, into middle, down towards Middle Street. Middle Street. Mm -hmm. That is collapsing and they built over it, so there are problems with them doing repairs. What the drainage board are looking at doing is completely re-engineering because it's all managed anyway and the flow is controlled they're looking at re-engineering it so that the flow wouldn't go that way to middle street it would flow back the other way so that's one problem they and we need to have that proved by the yeah. end to be that they can do it the other one is the road drains up here which are the ones of causing the, the flooding on the road so which is a highway issue as much as a, a drainage mm. issue mm. and that's that's the two things that need to be be addressed, but they are two completely separate problems. Yeah, but the issue is they'll be exacerbated by that development, potentially, if they're not solved. Regardless of that, we, we get flooding. Yes. And so it's got to be fixed. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, else you're going to build a development and which is going to be flooded automatically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the road. Yeah, yeah, so is, yeah. Can, can, I mean, so the proposal I think is that we, we can't support the application on the grounds that Colin has outlined. Um, so it's good to say, I just clarify, it's on plots 8 and 9 in terms of the visual aspect. Poor detail, detail on rainwater. Plots 1 and 2. Both, both culvert issues and entrances site from the centre of the village. So is that it, it, it was also plots 5 through 7, that's the big mm -hmm. long building. But also, if, if, if it's on the basis of objecting unless those things are addressed, in effect what that does is put the ball back in the court of the developers in Sedgemore because they will look at whether they can address those things and show that they are dealt with. And there is also the issue, actually coming down from Sedgemore really, um, I think, I personally think there should be some sort of signage of, uh, of, of traffic coming from the left. So I think that is that is also a highway problem. Yeah. Obviously associated lines. And then associated lines, white lines, whatever, double white lines. Whatever it needs to be done, the traffic needs to be addressed. So are you happy with I'm happy that? But what I will do before I before I uh, transmit to Central I will circulate it yeah. to make sure that that does address all the issues that you've now raised. Right. So we now have a proposal which I guess Colin, are you happy to propose? Yeah. Can I second that? Can we have a, a show of hands in respect of that proposal, please? So I think that's unanimous. Okay. Thank you. David? Yeah. Do you if they were wishing to grant it, I you have to go to committee if they haven't sort of those things. If they didn't take on board our comments and wanted to grant it, you would have to go to committee for committee to talk about it because okay. of the objection that we put in. Okay. Nice. Okay. Right, can we move on then, please? And it looks like it's Bob. District or county general. Yeah, a couple of things to report. Chairman, um, in terms of, of county, uh, for the last time on the sort of financial matters. You'll have heard, obviously, there's been a, a budget since then which 
looks like there may have been some comments made from government as to extra funding coming to sort of upper tier authorities, which may help with the shortfall in, in funding. To be honest, no one's counting their chickens until they've seen the small print um, as to what impact that had on county, but that was obviously before budget round. Um, those of you who are used to driving around Bridgewater, there's a, a, a section of the what's called the Collie Lane Industrial Estate, where they've been trying to create a link road to, to alleviate traffic around Bridgewater for more than 30 years, I think now. That is actually underway and being built at the moment, and they've just put in place the, the bridge that's gone across the Parrot, which is actually a, it's a 52 metre long bridge, and apparently it's the biggest single span bridge in Somerset now. Well, no, this is so this is through the basin part, but it's that there, there is a so if, if you're thinking where sort of Collie Lane goes out at the moment towards North Heatherton, yeah, that's um, Congress, yeah, so go out towards there, that's where the bridge is, is now going. Yeah, so, that, it, for that, that? yeah, it will, well, I guess it will slightly be navigable, but uh, that's just been craned in this last week, so um. The, the, the whole project is 18 and a half million quid worth of yeah, work going that's in there. That's brilliant, that's because all the traffic could come down into the line queue, and where's it going? Well, that's the next bit of the plan to work <laughs> on. Uh, Sorry. Yes. Um, I get a bit confused on Collier Lane, because I always thought Collier Lane, if you're going around the sort of bypass around Bridgewater on uh, Suts, yeah. uh, you hit the bridge, and the, there is a road off to the left by the traffic lights. I always thought that was Collier Lane and going down the Judgment Street. Yeah, it right takes you down towards the estate, doesn't it? It takes you down towards Collier Lane. Um, but that one will then connect out. Well, I'm right on that Collier Lane going down to that industrial estate there by the river bank. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. Ah, so, so where were they? So you'll off? carry on from there and it will connect up. So you'll turn at the other end at So you'll turn left at the traffic lights. Yeah. Yes. Right, thank you. Good. Uh, so. But basically, we'll open up that whole area for more, more industrial yeah. development. To be honest, yeah. down there. So, the library service. Um, you'll remember that I reported that there was a, over seven thousand letters or comments that come in about the, the libraries. Um, the recommendation that's going forward is of the thirty-four libraries, nineteen of them will continue pretty much as they are at the moment. Um, in our area. You've got Cheddars in the north, which was looked at being downgraded to a, a, a volunteer library. That's going to continue as it was. Um, Burnham will continue as it was. Highbridge is up for discussion at the moment as a... They're, they're talking to the town council as to whether they want to run it as a community library with volunteers. If they don't come forward and they can't find the volunteers, then Highbridge will, will close. Um, but there are 15 other, or 15 in total libraries that are being looked at as on a voluntary basis. The Cheddar one, in fact, um, although it's going to continue being run by county, the Cheddar Parish Council have put in funding, uh, which is helping to buy some new equipment to make it more of a self-serve library, so there'll still be staff there, but there will also be the ability that you can check in and out books without necessarily having to uh, go through. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the other thing I was going to mention, um, Sorry, can I just say, yes, the mobile libraries. that's continuing as, at the, the, the existing mobiles are carrying on, depending on what happens with these other 15 libraries, if more of them end up not continuing, then they're looking at potentially bringing out another mobile. Because we've had a problem with the mobile library here, with the mobile library breaking down, and it's not been on several occasions over the last two or three years. No. The, 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 the lorry that is the mobile library at the moment is actually being replaced anyway mm. because they've had problems with reliability and that's yeah. been the, the issue with it. So that is, is being replaced by a new one anyway. So that will, will continue on. The other thing just to mention in terms of, um, I don't know whether you may have heard that they, they've set up what they're calling the Somerset Wood, which is in um, commemoration of the 100th anniversary of, of the end of the First World War. They, it's a 23-acre site, um, and they are having about 14,000 trees planted there as a community wood. Apparently there were over 11,000 Somerset residents that fell in the First World War. Um, Where might uh, that be? Where about is that? That's a very good question. Okay. Um, 
in the sun, so. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> outside Taunton. Outside the outskirts of Taunton is the description. The trees are being donated by the Woodland Trust. A lot Ooh, of them are so worth it. Very good. And they're looking to plant them between November this year and early next year. A variety of trees. Broadleaf, but yes. Mm. Um, on the district front, um, we're obviously in the budget round as well, looking at, at finances. They are uh, not the, not in the same position as the county. Um, that there are the budget is is well under control. Um, the in, budget response, I think they've had a good reply back again this year from from the consultation that was sent out. And the other thing, really, just to mention that uh, I presume Owen's got it, is the invite for the planning training which is the 22nd and 27th mm -hmm. of this month. So hopefully we'll have a good turnout of that. Happy to take any others if there are other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Anything I'll Peter? Yes, well, it's terrible for me to say this, but our footpaths are far better than the roads. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, no, pretty well. I don't walk as much as I did used to. I can't get up the hill. So. But um, I think everything's okay. I've not had any phone calls about anything that's untoward. Um, there is one footpath that is becoming very dangerous. That's at the top of um, the old post office on Frank Corner. If you go straight up through there, what we used to call the rabbit hill. Well, at the very top, you have to hang on to the fence to pull yourself up. Mm. Mm. I didn't know whether um, Chris East could do anything for us there because it, it would require putting foot, uh, steps in there. And before you can put the steps in there, <coughs> make sure that you cover the wrong line, which is a shame. Someone should fall down. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, go on. Go on, at the last meeting, I mentioned about a piece of some, something metal sticking up on that oh, yes. berries mm. footpath, you know? Yeah. Has I anything been done about that, you know? No, I don't think it's done. Not when the land sticks up. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah. I forgot all that. That's Colin? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's happened to it, so I don't want to labour it, but the, once again, the fence post on the path from the lower kissing gate to the upper one is bust and still missing and there is a further post now very loose so i don't know if that's Dave, on, that's on David, what Dave 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 is he's aware at the moment he's aware at the moment and, and to be honest with you we probably need to have another contractor as well as Dave because he clearly doesn't cope with all the things that we're throwing at him so he does a good job he, he does, does it. but unfortunately he's you know he's, busy, I think. once you get him he's fine he does a, yeah. say, he does a great job but yeah. Uh, it's on his list, certainly, Colin, but uh, okay. I think you're going to contact John, actually, to... But there's another, talk, there's another sure. post now. Yeah. I think he's going to contact you and John. Is he? No, well, yeah. 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 Um, um, yes, uh, a neighbour of mine congratulated the Parish Council on the installation of the gate and uh, the footpath from um, Blackmore Lane. Good, thank you. Yeah. Um, the the um, gate going into the Berries field, the actual gate post is very, very loose. It's quite a big one. Obviously the gate hangs on it, and so does the, obviously the fitting for the uh, kissing gate that's there. And so, it, I mean, it's, it's quite dangerous actually. It's being propped up really by one or the other. And it's a great big one. Yeah. So I don't know whose responsibility that is, whether it's berries or whether it's yeah. us. Um, I'm sorry, God, Mr. President, I forgot another one. That um, uh, down Crooked Lane, um, if you come, as you go past the, the over the bridge, round the corner, past the stables, up to the corner that then goes down, there's a stile there, and it's bust completely. The way you get over it, um, it, it needs a new step there. But this is probably related to what I'm going to talk about with the railway in a minute, but that does need doing. It's bust, it's just non-existent. Yeah. Who, who, who would do that for us? Is that something that... Again, Dave Wellens, the ideal well, candidate, but... Yeah. So it needs to go on his list, or, or we need to think about alternatives. Yeah. I think, um, what I was thinking of doing, actually, at some stage, is perhaps getting Dave to come along to 
uh, perhaps a meeting, because he, he doesn't know quite where the council work. He's not that familiar, so I think he'd find it quite useful to know how we work and what sort of things we're asking him to do. Because we're, we're taking him off at a tangent at the moment. We're doing, he's doing other things. And for example, he's going to remove the notice board. Well, it's not technically in his, in his remit, but he couldn't think of anybody else to do it. So he's, he's prepared to do that. And is, is it an urgent thing? And, so? and yeah, is that more <laughs> urgent? Than, or is the, is the footpath more urgent at the start? You know, we have to, to prioritise these things, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, is this... Or we need somebody else perhaps to share the work, you know, the load with him. Perhaps we've got a couple of contractors. To... And in terms of that gate that Cynthia's on about, is that our responsibility for the landowners, do you think? It's, if, if, if it's the little wicket gate, it's our responsibility. But it sounds it's like the main gate. It's the first one, it's the first it's one. The yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a great big double gate, isn't it? That's yeah, a great double gate. Which double gate? Well, it's the, the post of the big it's gate. The post. The big gate. Yes. So it's not really for us right. to. So it's berries. Yeah. It could be that the other caught it. Yeah. Or done it. Yeah. But it essentially, if it fell on somebody. I mean, we put gates in for other people. We put gates in for Vicky, two gates we put in for her, and we put a gate in for, and I don't know who the plan is, alongside the side of the farm, we put that in. Yeah. But is it worth contacting the landowner? And say, I thought so. Yeah, I think so. Perhaps they don't know. Yeah. I mean, they might know, and they're really telling a blind eye to it, and yeah. they're going to pretty wait to them and say, Look, it, if it it's being brought to our attention that it's, it could do with. It's a slimy gate, isn't it, David? It's the one on that we're talking about. With the gate you go through with the tractor. Which, 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 which side is the gate hung on? The big gate. The main gate. Right. right. It's hung on, on that post. Oh, ah, so that's a nice right. It's probably rotted at the bottom. Which way are you coming from? I came from the road. Sorry. As long as the little gate. As long as the little gate. Well, it right. does, but it's hanging on to this thing. So it's on this thing. If it's the little gate. Well, it it uses it as a that's the. Yes, it is hanging on to that because the other side. It's hanging on to that. It's our It's both hanging on it. Mm -hmm. Both hanging yeah. on. It's lovely, our job. Well, it, mm -hmm. the, the other thing. one is like the fitting in the um, latching. The latching yeah. is on the right. post, and which and is and wobbly. And, yeah. and we are on so, the other side of that post. Mm -hmm. The question is is, is is it our responsibility or the landowners? Ask the, the landowner. Ask the landowner. I'll go and have a look at it. And if it's the latching, I'm going to see Sheila. So you, so you, have a look. Yeah, you do that? Thank you. At the same time, we'll go and have a look at your current post. Yeah. It's a piece of metal, isn't it? Yeah, so I believe the bridge is in the ground. Can it be cut off? Can, can it be cut off? Yeah. Does it want digging out, or does it want cutting? I don't know. Cutting or bashing? I think it is. John Page told me. Anything on highways, please? No, nothing to report from anyone yet. Just the potholes by tennis. Well, they continue to grow and get deeper. I think they're a bit of a better leg to the magic size. I certainly like through the drainage to have a look at the coal replicas from Hill Lane to Brent Corner. Because if you go down the road, you can see there's cracks and crevices. Where everything is sliding into that town gutter yeah. and make like things. And it's next week, it's six years since we had the flooding. It's, it's mm. almost yeah. a while this morning. Yeah. 2012. Mm. 14th of November. Oh, gosh. All I was going to say was I'm conscious that there's been a lot more heavy, heavy goods vehicles going through the village. Mm. And they are causing issues on the edge of the road uh, with cracking. And that's all they've been alluded to. And I'm just conscious of, is there anything we can do to stop lorries going through the village that are just using it as a rat run? Mm -hmm. I have mentioned it to Bob whether we could consider a weight limit, but um, can't, like, we could ask the question rather than... I think we should. I did. Yeah. 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 I would prefer to go through Brent now to go through the engineering works in the Sprint rather than come around that horrible corner by the old butchers. Mm -hmm. I met one coming towards me the other day and had to really like, cross both lanes. Yeah. But there was four, th four 30 tonnes went through Burton Row 
yesterday, uh, within an hour of each other. Well, in fact, it was almost like a convoy, and then they came back within an hour. Ooh. That was two, one Toby and uh, mm -hmm. three. And they sit down in the stone? I guess, but I can't hide. Where they're, where they're working? I don't know. We're still on highways, aren't we? Um, yes. At the bottom of Church Lane, I noticed today that uh, there's a wooden fence between the two plastic, um, metal ones, and it's in an awful state. Painting, these painting, these smartly look, look awful. No, no, I think our fence. By that time, I guess it does look awful. You're quite right. Yeah, I think it needs washing up. But the drop, one of the problems there is that the bank is collapsing too, mm. and, the, and the little plastic posts. Are oh, they plastic? They're plastic, yes, yeah. they are. So, just kind of fast forward, just so I know. So, corner of Nottingham Farm. Yeah, facing, oh, up, oh, green, facing green. up Church Lane, it's on the left corner. Church Lane. Where the contractors put in the new culvert. Up is in Ivy Square. Yeah, it's just from that new culvert going up yeah. towards the yeah. hill, and it goes for about. 30 yards? Yeah, on the left. Mm -hmm. And the car is pretty well full out. Hmm? This side, yeah, because once they divert into water, they know it'll so mm -hmm. be. Fine, yeah, right. Does that need a quote from Peter from Andy Selbury? You're talking about painting. So yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. They smartening up. Oh, smartening up. The glass is painting. Sorry, there's glass. There's wood. The wooden ones. These are wooden. There's a section of wooden. Yeah, that's half and half. Yeah, half. Really? There's plastic. Wood, no plastic. Oh, ah, all plastic. I think they're all plastic, aren't they? So I can clarify from the beginning. Yeah, there's a section of the wall for. You could ask me. Otherwise, it's one of those things that we don't get the right start on it. So I'll have another look again just to confirm it with the other. Okay, thank you. Chen, I'd like to ask, in terms of Updates on current matters, is that covering the hedge on station road? We've got that as a general item, I remember. Well, we've got highways reports and updates on current matters, and if the hedge is going over the highways, which yeah, it is, yes, then we can add it to there. I was only going to report that I was, I was down the other day. It looks like there's been some trimming of part of the hedge as you're coming out of the little development. Mm -hmm. As you look to your right hand side, there is a piece that hangs right out. And blocks yeah. the vision of up towards the railway line. Mm -hmm. It's outside, I think it's called Little Lake Corn. Yeah, if we write in residence, mm -hmm. maybe the head is growing over the park and things like that, and we'll order right the county because I went down to see the Burnham Carnival on Sunday, previous to the carnival, and when you go around the roundabout, there's no footpath there, it's all grown over with grass and, and mo um, moss. Mm. And also the reeds and everything all the way down through the road from. But the only decent bit is alongside uh, Andrew Hells. He keeps that nice and tidy. And then once you get around the end there, the reeds are grown over and the grass is coming out. Well, the bit outside Andrew Hells is the bit that we now get Jason Mayer to keep trimmed back. Oh, well, it's looking nice. That's mm -hmm. what I think John did. Yeah, um, coming down Brent Street from the A38 end, um, and where the, uh, the car, the, where uh, the bungalow was done on which, which is on your right as you're coming down. And on the left there is the uh, white line delineating some sort of pavement, which is parked over, but actually the other day there were not many parked cars parked there, and it's very, very clear that there are some hedges along that road which are falling all over the place, which you don't really see because the cars are parked there. Mm. And we're not certain what number it is. But um, we have, have to agree, but if they are bad. If that is the case, we ought to write to the owners. Mm. So can somebody. You know, this is for you. Yeah. Can somebody uh, 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 advise Owen? Yeah. Of you the the owners are on the letters. No problem. And now we can write to them. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Thank you. you what are you going on? Are you going to do it? Thanks for having me. Who did the village green toilet block? Me. David. Now to you, sir. Great excitement. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 
Grass all cut and generally tidy, odd overhanging brambles from fence by slide where you turn the corner. But I think Jason might have cut them because I did say to him and he was going to attend. Uh, dead tree branches from overhanging trees by a trim trail and multi play unit that have broken off from the back and GB Sports have picked it up as well. Um, I chucked some over the fence because I thought they'd be better off out the way. But I know there's another one down, which I shall do tomorrow. Um, bushes by entrance of the green need cutting back, because at one time we were keeping them quite a lot reduced on what they are now. They've got quite big, because we're not really supposed to let them get too big, are we? Because of people hiding in them. That was all it was at one time. Um, <laughs> car park generally okay, a few leaves and apples around. Uh, weeds growing around the perimeter. Uh, recycle area could do with tidying, leaves, weeds, etc. Toilets all clean and okay. I went there twice. Um, the ground is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ground sinking again by the front of the toilet block, which I filled before and did fill it again in the summer. But whether we need to do something a bit better because it's seems to just disappear whenever you put topsoil there and put the turf back. Um, apples being thrown on toilet block, exterior walls. That's about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I couldn't see it. No, I'm looking for it actually, and I can't see it. So, to do with the toilet block. Did we not discuss the apple tree? They have the possibility of taking that apple tree down. It, it was flo floated as an idea, but mm -hmm. we, haven't, we haven't had a, a thought on it. I mean, is it, is it worth considering taking it down? No, we don't agree with that. Why did you want to take it down? Because it makes a mess. Well, it, 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 it only fruits every once, every so many years. Yes. Next year, we'll probably have nothing like that. Right. We're going to take it down for nothing. Yes. In my opinion. Mm. Mm. Peter? The notice board, you were saying you were waiting for somebody mm. there, but wasn't it promised to Mac? Yeah, I'm not going to have it, yes. But if they promise it to Mac, perhaps he'd like to take Check it. Check it, maybe be prepared to. I mean, I'm yeah. happy to ask him. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 I'll, I'll see him, I'll leave him do what I ask him. I was going to say, you know, yes, sure. he has a problem, so... Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's all empty, it's all empty, it can be taken away now, so... I'll yeah. break his part. Okay. Do you have the keys back? For the I've got all the keys. Um, we've got Roger, Roger's got a set, I've got a set. Um, so there's a set in the village. <coughs> Are you happy I've seen him? Yeah, please. Fine. <coughs> well, I'll do, Peter, before I go this evening, if you just remind me, I'll give you, I'll give you all the, the little funny keys. Oh, right, okay. Because you might want that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's not an item on the agenda separately, but Colin, would you like to talk about the toilet block now, please? Uh, yep, um, right everybody, you'll need a pen um, just to make a note of the figures I'm going to give you. Um, um, I'm going to refer to them as A, B, C and D. We have uh, four quotations. A, £11,488.60 plus VAT. B, £10,560 plus VAT. C, £8,900, that's no VAT, and D, £4,667, no VAT. Um, Does he work at a caravan? Um, the, um, I've spoken uh, to one of the contractors um, um, who assures me that um, um, the quote is within his um, requirements, for want of a better word, and it's based on the specification that we gave, Harris Brothers Collard gave us, so they all quoted on the same specification. Um, the points to consider going forward are, uh, the quote is for waterless urinals, and waterless urinals uh, require servicing. Um, because there's a build-up of, of um, um, 
crystallisation, for want of a better word, uh, and um, they need to be treated with chemicals and a, um, I've got some technical information on it, um, they need to have cartridges replaced every so often and the system needs flushing out. I've spoken to Sedgemoor District Council, they haven't, they're aware that a lot of councils do have water rescue runs for obvious reasons, they're cheaper to run, um, uh, but they don't uh, service them regularly, but they would be happy to service these, um, subject obviously it's going to cost us some money. So um, um, I'll, I'll summarise where, where I've got, got to right, right at the end. The other thing we need to consider is whether we want to have better floor surfaces in there rather than just a painted one. And there are some quotes um, for, um, if you like, upgraded flooring. Uh, one of uh, £1,372 plus VAT and another one of £1,590 plus VAT. These would be specialist uh, floorings um, that would would not require a regular maintenance, just cleaning, uh, and they would be far better than they'd last longer than a painted surface. Um, so, um, where 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 have I got to? If we if we use the if we have the better flooring, we may well have a logistical problem because. Of the, and I've checked it tonight, on the pans in both the men's and the ladies' loo, the outlet goes directly into the wall. So if you raise the pan, which it would do, because you have to take the pan out to put the floor down, the floor will be a th certain thickness, so you will have a problem in fitting the pan back to the existing outflow. So there will be a logistical logistical problem there. Um, but wh where have we got to? Um, uh, um, sorry? Sorry, specialist flooring you're talking about. Yes, but uh, how can I pull all of this together? What, what I... Uh, I don't want to spend a great deal of time on this um, uh, unless the council are prepared to go ahead with this or give me an indication that they're going to go ahead and uh, the question I first raise is financing uh, if we finance it the way we have financed our play area then the costs will be recouped we borrow it of ourselves and recoup it back over the years and bear in mind I think if you do it we do it on the basis that it's done now, but it may well have to be done in five years' time. Maybe not so um, great a, a, a development, but certainly painting of the walls maybe, and um, uh, refurbishment. So it's not a, in doing this, it's not a fix forever, no. it, it's just upgrading it. Yeah. The outside will be painted, the windows will be done, Everything will be, if you like, a a job. So that's one thing I would ask you. And the second thing is, I think we need to investigate the water less you runnels and the servicing and the additional costs from Sedgemoor District Council. Mm -hmm. And then I think we need to know, or I need your steer, on whether we go for it, for want of a better word, and put better flooring in there to uh, enhance the, the property. Mm -hmm. So... That's where I am. I, I, I don't want to do any more work on it. Can I just say to you two or three things? I, I would support that we do it because I think it's important <laughs> that we can have something. It's, it's something that's um, reflective of the village that is not the decrepit state. I, I think it's awful, but that's my personal opinion of the current state. Two, if we go, I would say advocate and support Colin's view of upgrading the floor primarily because if we're going to have people keeping it clean, if you've got something that's easier to clean, people will do a better job and it will be maintained in a better way. And finally, my final comment was on the water rescue idols, 
there, is, there are examples within a stone's throw of where we're sitting at Sounders Garden Centre if anybody wants to go and see them. If you ever want to do that, but I'm seriously, they, they have read a lot of the garden centres, they've done it across the board.